Thank you for the honor to be up here and to speak to all of you. When I drove to the airport in Munich yesterday, I turned the pages in my memory, and there were so many, just one picture after another came in. I just want to share some with you. The first, it was really sympathy at first sight when I met Jim Lorimer 40 years ago. It was just a feeling, you know, this is the man, first sight. Sometimes happens in life, and I'm very fortunate to have known him now for 40 years. I've been an eyewitness of everything what happened here under the leadership of Jim and Arnold, and I missed only two of their shows since 76. Probably the longest hug I ever had in my entire life was exactly 13 years ago as of today. It happened in the early morning of the 8th of October in 2003. Jim and I were standing in a hotel in Los Angeles waiting for an announcement. And the announcement we wanted to hear was, and it came, Arnold Schwarzenegger is elected 38th governor of the state of California. The two of us hugged each other. We jumped around like kids. And thank God, the, it was not the internet time already, that it was really a strange picture, probably. <laughs> but we enjoyed it tremendously. And I never felt so close to my friend Jim Lorimer as in these moments. At custom last night, the officer asked the usual questions. What's the purpose of your trip? And he was a kind of guy like a machine, almost like reminded me of a Terminator or so. <laughs> so my answer was the birthday of a friend. And he asked on and said, what's your friend doing? And I said, uh, he's organizing the Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm going to. And he said, don't know. And I said, but you know Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. That was it. So even before I entered US, Jim and Arnold were with me already spiritually. So many stories have told, have been told and written about this special friendship between Jim Lorimer and Arnold Schwarzenegger. But to me, it is very, very simple. This friendship has been created by someone higher than us. It was simply meant to be. But today, Jim, it's your day. And you, Jim, are to me, as bloody foreigner, the epitome of the American spirit and what for all of us is the most important thing in life is hope, love, and faith. You are such a great role model in giving hope to so many people all your life. And to me especially, you make me always feel like a kid. 
So I'm very thankful personally for that feeling, and I have hope for the future if I think of you. You had the courage and the passion to take on so many challenges, and you always had the faith in yourself and in all the members of your many teams. So you proved that faith can truly move mountains. Your mountain is the Arnold Sports Festival. And you are represented now in all six continents. And this unique success story, as Bob Goldman mentioned it before already, started when you turned 50. I mean, many people think already at that age about retiring. But retirement, thank God, is not in your vocabulary. And Jim, millions of fans around the world love it. Which leads me to my credo in life. And I've written this sentence probably thousands of times to many people. Love is bigger than the world we know. You, Jim, gave and received so much love in your life that it seems to be a part of a fairy tale. But thank God, it is so very true. May I ask you all, please, stand for the lady who all her life supported the dreams of her husband, Jim Lorimer. Thank you, Jean, for your true love to Jim. Your love made him and made everything possible. Thank you, Jean. And may I add a little anecdote, if it comes to love. 20 years ago, I had the privilege to attend, it was one of many, the Lorimer family and team dinner on Sunday, Sunday evening after the Arnold Sports Festival. It was one of these great evenings full of joy and love. Overwhelmed of the feelings, I forgot a simple scarf was hanging around the chair, and I forgot it. Jim drove me to the hotel from Worthington back to Columbus. And in the car, I suddenly found out the scarf is not there. And the scarf was a very special Christmas present from my wife who passed away several years earlier. And I told Jim the story. And I got off in Columbus at the Hyatt on Capitol. And I told him, please look for the scarf, because I leave early tomorrow and send it to me. 90 minutes later. The telephone rang in my hotel room. I was almost on sleep, and it was Jim. He was waiting for me in the lobby with the scarf. So Jim, because of this act of love to me, I brought you today another scarf. And this scarf is from a famous beer hall in Munich, probably the most famous in the world. It is from the Hofbrauhaus, and it should always remember you. I love you, Jim.
Jim, go for the hundred. We need you. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. Now it is my privilege and honor to introduce a man who doesn't need an introduction at all, literally speaking. We all know his achievements in so many different areas, and they are, like Bob Goldman already mentioned also, unmatched on our blue planet, period. What stands out above all is this unique friendship over 60 years now to Jim Lorimer. To find the gap between the friendship of Jim and Arnold, you probably have to use a nano measurement. There isn't a gap visible. To me, Arnold represents what St. Paul wrote in his first letter to Timothy, verse 13, 13, three remain, love, hope, and faith. But love is the greatest. Please welcome the one and only Arnold. 